The S&P and NASDAQ are at records. The Dow is closing in on 29,000. Joining us for a look at what might next be next for the market is David Bonson. He is managing partner and CIO at the Bonson Group. The Bonson Group is more than $2 billion in assets under management. David is the author of the new book, Elizabeth Warren, How Her Presidency Would Destroy the Middle Class uh, and the American Dream. Really? Oh, I certainly think so. What about Bernie? Uh, I guess you could say they're kind of one and the same ideologically. At the time I wrote the book, Warren was surging, and now Bernie's kind of taken over her, but the arguments would be the same. Which initiatives are, are most um, uh, heinous in your view for, for the economy? I mean, the ones that get the most attention are obviously the Medicare for All and then the Green New Deal support. The things are these huge trillion dollar price tags. I focus a lot more in the book just philosophically on the class warfare and this decision that everything in society that's going wrong is because there's big powerful people trying to hurt middle class people. Uh, I think it's Marxian and I think it's patently false. Well, that, that was my point. That I mean, if you take, if you truly believe that we're at a tipping point in the in climate, I guess thirty trillion dollars is not too much to spend uh, yeah. at this point to save the world. Right. I mean, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think of what do you think of Larry Fink? I mean, Larry's always been far left. I think. There were a couple of things that stuck out to me. I mean, when he says the number one thing we're hearing from our investors, that language, which is, you know, you can't prove it or verify right. it. But what he's saying is that that's the number one thing their investors are talking to them about is climate change. I confess I'm a little skeptical. I, I kind of think they're investors. You have investors that... that uh, yeah, I would think they're primarily talking about their investor returns. I mean, that, the, so the whole thing... To me, I get the merit to it. I think from a PR standpoint, it's important that they take that posture. But I want to see specificity. And for me, as a natural gas investor, because I do take stewardship seriously, I don't believe the left when they talk about CO2 emissions if they're not big pro-natural gas people. We know that America is declining its CO2 emissions because right. of our greater use of natty gas. So I'd like to see people actually back it up with that kind of support. I mean, is there's, there's sustainability who there's no one who's going to argue with sustainability obviously but there's you need an economy that's that's sustainable too to i mean the entire world has benefited from fossil fuels over the last hundred years yeah. more than probably any other single entity eventually obviously we didn't run out of stones in the stone age we're going to transition away from it but you can't spend twenty dollars or whatever it is per kilowatt when you're getting it for 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 a dollar fifty. Well, one thing I talk about in the book that I think we don't talk about enough is how regressive what they want to do is. The percentage of money you and I spend on our heating bill is a very small portion of our income. It's a huge portion of income for lower uh, income people, middle class people. Right. This idea that all of a sudden they have these broad changes they want to make where you can't control China's pollution and you're going to have that kind of economic impact India. to lower income people. I, I, I just don't think that the risk reward is properly aligned right now. David, thank you. At least we're having the conversation, as yeah. we always say. Anyway, thank you, uh, David.